In section 2.2, we finally want to deal with organizing quantitative data. So that will be both discrete and continuous quantitative data. Hooray! All right, so discrete, which is what we're going to work with first. You can see right here, discrete and continuous data, which we'll work with a little bit later in the section. All right, now there are a couple of things we want to keep in mind. Number one, when we have classes, those are the categories by which data are grouped. When a data set consists of a large number of different discrete values, or when a data set consists of continuous data, so I'm prepping you for that, we must create classes by using intervals of number. The first class would be on the top, the second class would be next row, and so on. So in a lot of programs, these are called bins. You're binning your data. Right, as in two bins. <laughs> so you can see here 60 to 65 is one bin, 65 to 70 is another bin, 70 to 75 is a bin, and so on. Those are the bins. And a histogram is a, it looks like a bar chart, but it's not quite a bar chart. Um, it's a graph with vertical bars that are, the variables are quantitative down here. See that? So that's quantitative data for the height part. And the rectangles are the same width, the axes should be labeled, the graph should be two-dimensional. So you can see it's very similar to a bar chart. However, the bars actually touch, right? So right here, as opposed to in a bar chart when they did not touch each other. But here the bars do touch each other. And that's because there's no gap. You assume this is 60 all the way up to 65, and then 65 all the way up to 70, and so on. And so these the variables are quantitative down here. So these are quantitative. And you can see that the bars touch each other. Right, the bars touch, there's no gap. Oh, you can see it right there, right? That's better than this arrow. All right, so that's a histogram. So it's it's like a bar chart, but not quite. Um, it's because it's numerical data on the horizontal axis and the bars touch. And then there's something called a dot plot, which is a graphical display of quantitative data where each data point is represented by a dot over a number line. And the number of dots rep represent the number of data points with that value. So this is the cancer rates by state per 100,000 residents, and this actually is, in case you're interested. So you can see um, one state, for example, is at 450 per 100,000 residents, but four states are at 510 per 100,000 residents, because there's four dots right there. And then let's see, this is 490, so this is 500 right here in the middle. Two states are at 500 right here. This would be 500 at that line. And so then this is 505, and there's four states at 505, right? That's how to read a dot plot. All right, so before we can go make a histogram of our own, or a dot plot for that matter, we are going to gather data right here, or look at a data set that was from a real class. It was about, um, it's actually from two classes of Math 133 students from fall of 2019, and how many siblings they had. All right, so we can see we have the number of siblings here, the relative frequency here. If we add up the relative, or excuse me, the frequency, I apologize, we're going to find the relative frequency. So if we add up these numbers, that's 16, 29, 40, 48, 53, 54, 55. And I just double checked my math with the calculator just to make sure. And sure enough, that sum is 55. All right, so if I want these relative frequencies, what I want is 4 divided by 55, 12 divided by 55, and so on. But reasonably, I want them in decimals because who would want to work with fractions? And the easiest way to do that is either to use my calculator, right, 4 divided by 55, and so on, or I can grab StatCrunch, right? So I have my number of siblings right here, 0 through 7. I've got my frequencies. So I can go to Data, let my mouse hover, Compute, an expression and I'm going to build an expression so I want it to take the frequency oh and I want to round so I'm going to go round scroll down here round two so round two and then I want to take frequency and divide by sum of frequencies right because that'll divide by the total which was 55 so it's taking the frequency and it's dividing by the sum of the frequency 
and then I want it to round it to three decimal places. And I say, okay. And I click compute. Oh, I want to put it in a column. I want to label that column relative frequency. So now when I click compute, it will make a new column. Oh, it shoved it all the way over there. That's fine. Um, but it is the relative frequency column. And I actually wanted to move it. I don't like it being there. So I clicked on this little arrow and I click move column. I'm going to move that column before variable three and say, okay. And it's going to kind of shove it over there. All right. So I can write all those decimals. So it's 0 0.073, 0 0.218, 0 0.236, And again, you could find all of these with a calculator if you wanted to. It's just not as fast. And 0 0.018 and 0 0.018. And of course, that real relative frequency column should sum to 1. If it made 0.999, it's not the end of our world, but it should make one. All right, so we have our number of siblings, we have our frequency, we have our relative frequency, and actually I've gotten rid of these pieces, so sorry about that. I will delete that for future. And place their values in the chart. Now the number of siblings is quantitative and discrete, right? You either have two siblings or you have three siblings, but you can't have 2.365 siblings. That doesn't exist. So it's definitely quantitative discrete. All right, now we want to make a histogram and a dot plot for these data. All right, so a histogram would be to have bars for each one of these. Now the thing about a histogram on StatCrunch, let me just show you, is that I can't do it from the grouped data. What I had to do was I went over here and I typed four zeros, 12 ones, 13 twos, 11 threes, and so on. And if I do that, then I can go to graph, histogram, and choose, it's the second number of siblings right there. That's the one that was later in the chart. So it tends to go in order, column one, column two, column three. It skipped that fourth column because there's nothing there. So there it is, number of siblings, and I can say I want it to be frequency. If I want the values over the bar, I can click on values over bar, but it's not necessary. It's not required or anything. And then that's it. So I can go to uh, compute, and there it is. That's a histogram. Now, that's a histogram, but I had to type all those numbers in. So with summarized data, what you can do is sort of fake a histogram. It's not really a histogram, it's a bar chart. So I can choose bar plot with summary and choose my categories and number of siblings and my frequency is frequency, there's my counts. And leave it as type as frequency. And I don't want values of sorting, I want the worksheet. I want what the worksheet had, although values ascending would also work because it's zero through seven. So it doesn't make any difference there. And again, if you want to choose value over bar, you can. And I click compute. And there you have it. Now, this is not a histogram. It's a bar plot um, because the bars are not touching. But the problem is that StackCrunch doesn't let you make a histogram from grouped data like that. It doesn't let you do it. So you either have to have the big column worth of data, whoop, which is the raw data right there in that fifth column right there. That fifth column can make you that histogram over here. But if you have just that table in the first two columns, then you have to kind of make a bar chart and then just make the bars touch each other as they should, right? They are identical otherwise. These are the same graphs. It's just that the bars aren't touching. All right, so what you do is you go over to your paper and you use a ruler and you copy that histogram down. Okay, so let's see here. I've got to find the window. There it is. Okay, so for zero, one, two, I'm going to make it so that the numbers are in the middles of those bars here. If it would be better, I would, I should probably use a ruler, but I didn't. I'm bad about that. <laughs> All right, so the first one is at four, right here, because the first frequency was four. Then you make a little bar. And then the next one is at 1, was 12. So I've got to make it go all the way up to 12. And notice I use this piece of that side. It just kind of grows out of it. 
And it should be going straight up. I don't know if I'm as straight as I should be. Here we go. And there's 12. And then the next one's 13. Of course, a computer is better for this. We don't generally have you do this stuff by hand. We do it one time by hand in the notes to kind of learn the basic ropes of how these are built and what they look like and so on. But other than that, we don't generally do them by hand very often. All right, so this is eight. You'll notice when the bar is taller, I don't even have to make a left-hand side, it just is. And then this is five. And then six was with one. Seven was with one, and then those ones just go straight across. And there you have it. That's a histogram. So you got your number of siblings here, you have your frequency here. If it was relative frequency, it would look exactly the same, but have decimals over here and say relative frequency. Now the dot plot is even easier, because a dot plot, what you do is you put a dot for each of the students that had zero siblings. There were four of them. So you put four dots, stack them up. And then for one, I just want to keep these vertical if I can manage it. So I want 12. So one, two, three, four, and so on. You want to keep the spacing even. That's why I'm using the grid. Oops, except you don't want to go that high because it was 12. Oh, 10, 11, 12. That's perfect. And then two was at 13. So that goes all the way up here. This is a dot plot. And then three was at eight. Oh, I'm getting wobbly. I can feel it. I know it. I know it's true. That's why I've got to use my ruler. I think I went to eight. Oh, three was at 11. Oops, wrong one. Four is at eight. Sorry. And you're supposed to put make it so the dots are equally spaced. So they should be using the same grid that we were using to make the histogram. And then you want to keep those dots nice and vertical. Like that. It's sort of like a histogram, but made with dots instead of um, the bars touching, right? And it's built off of the number line. Now to do that in StatCrunch, it's actually quite um, relatively easy here. So let's go to graph. There's dot plot right there. And if I choose the one where I have the raw data, I should have no problem at all. So let's see here. Let's just click compute and see what happens. And there they are. It's like the histogram, but made with dots, <laughs> right? And you can see it doesn't scale it automatically. It just is what it is. And as with the histogram, it will only let you do a dot plot here from the raw data. So we have to have that raw data in order to do this dot plot. It won't let us do it from the summarized data. So that's all right. These aren't exactly difficult to make. So as long as we know the frequencies, we can plot the dots ourselves. But the beautiful thing about a dot plot is that it's sort of like a histogram, but you can actually count how many there are in there with dots. And it also has a little bit um, of a less of a binning issue. So it usually just is each of those dots or each of those columns and you just put dots and stack them up.